Hi guys and welcome to this video where we're going to take a closer look at Toby's new eye tracker 5 and we're going to compare it to the old eye tracker 4c but I'm also going to compare it a little bit at least to tracking devices in general. I'm going to focus on Euro Truck Simulator 2 and American Truck Simulator both games by SCS Software and the reason I'm doing that is obviously because I am a YouTuber who almost exclusively do videos on those two games and we're going to start by taking a look inside the box and see what you find there and the first thing you find there is the iTrack 5 itself of course with its big camera it's kind of difficult to see here perhaps but there is a huge camera that sticks out there and just for comparison here is the old eye tracker 4c next to it as you can see the eye tracker 4c is both thicker and longer than the new one but that's just the physical difference between the two we get to the rest of it later on in the video in the box we also find two brackets these are the very same brackets you found with the old one so if you're operating from 4c to 5 you can still use the old bracket you already have on your monitor and then we have this thing here, which is a new bracket for those of you who have a curved display. It's always been a problem with the Toby R Tracker if you have curved displays. Using this one that just sticks underneath your monitor instead, no problem. And then we have the USB extension cable as well. It measures 3.3 feet in length, so the combined length of the two cables should be enough for most PCs. And then finally we have the legal mumbo jumbo warranty and safety documentations. We don't need those. Fact is the box itself contains the how to get started information. You don't need that either. And to prove it this is recorded live while I am doing the installation of the software. Everything you see on the screen here is what happens in real time. I have plugged the device in, you heard the first sound there, and uh, now we just have to wait. And again, I'm not going to speed this up, I'm just going to wait and allow you to see what happens. There is nothing going on on the side here, everything is real time. Perhaps I should mention as well that you have, if you like me, have the iTracker 4C, have to uninstall the software for the iTracker 4C before you plug in the iTracker 5. The software is different, it's not compatible between the two devices, that is not a problem of course, it still saves your old profile and all of that, so don't worry about it. And here we go! The installation of the software is now completed, so it's time to do the calibration and setup of the device. Uh, before we can do that, we need to um, go through the legal mumbo jumbo. Uh, so let's click here. And yeah, um, read very carefully through that before you accept. And then it's time to start the setup of the device. And you start the calibration of the device by telling it how large the screen is or the monitor is. And the way you do that is that you point out where the lines on top of the device, where they are on your monitor. And then you click done. And yeah, there's my eyes. I'm looking to the left and to the right. And now it's all about looking at these dots until they explode. There are three of them. And one more time. And there we go. My head tracker has been calibrated. The setup is complete. This is how easy it was for me. Uh, upgrading from iTracker 4C to 5. There is a additional step for those of you who do not have a previous version of the iTracker and that is by creating your Toby profile. You can see I have a profile called Wombat and uh, you're gonna need that and you need one profile per user because the calibration is slightly different between different users. Of course everyone has different eyes. 
but since I already did this when I got my iTrack 4C, I don't have to go through that step this time. And so here we are in game. Let's have a look at the controls. If we scroll down here, you'll see that the eye tracker is enabled directly. If we click configure, I'm right now on a custom profile and that just happens to be the Toby ET5 default pro, uh, profile that I deselected auto center on. The reason I do that is because I don't like the auto center feature. That's a personal preference. Of course, you might like it. I don't. Uh, and another thing I don't like uh, is auto pause. Now auto pause in this case is disabled out of the box anyway. Uh, third thing I always change or add is a reset head button. So joy button 15 is one of the um, buttons on my steering wheel. Um, I want to have that close and handy in case the um, tracking device gets confused for some reason. Uh, they usually don't, but you never know. And uh, that's it. Let's try the almost default setting then. I haven't touched the gaze tracking, the eye tracking at all. I haven't touched those settings at all. And I haven't touched the head tracking settings either. So I'm going to use these default settings and see what that looks and feels like. And so here we are inside the cab. I can move my head in any direction. I can even oh, look backwards. A little bit hard perhaps. Uh, look back inside the cab as well. You don't do that very often. <laughs> uh, look up a little bit and down just enough really. I don't need to look up or down or sideways any more than I'm already doing. Uh, it's more than enough. And these settings, uh, let's see, I'm going to use just my eyes now, and as you can see, I move over to the mirrors on both sides, but I prefer to use my head much quicker. So I guess this setting is for uh, head tracking mainly, and then perhaps using the eyes to fine adjust it. Let's take it for a spin and see how it feels. So uh, this is very usable indeed and a huge improvement over iTracker 4C. Uh, the default settings on iTracker 4C were, to be honest, almost not usable. They worked if you were very conscious about what you were doing. Um, these settings feels much more natural. I'm relaxed. I'm just hauling hair. Uh, nothing to, uh, to to worry about really. There are of course things that I want to change. Uh, it feels like my head is moving just a little bit while I'm talking because I'm talking. So I'm gonna tone it down a little bit so that I'm able to um, to talk and do some things without having the device uh, turning my head or moving my head in any direction uh, while I'm trying at least to look straightforward. Another personal preference is that I do not like, well I do like, but I, I don't like uh, having eye tracking enabled uh, and the reason for that is that my situation is perhaps a little different from most I'm a YouTuber, so I need to move my eyes in different directions without any audience being annoyed by it. Uh, I mean, if I'm trying to look up at the screen here, uh, I don't want the monitor, the gaming monitor, to move along with it. And the reason I need to look up here is because that's where I have my chat when I'm streaming. That's where I can see what is going on with uh, with the game and uh, sorry with the stream and uh, what you're talking to me about and I want to see that, of course. Uh, then I have an additional screen on the other side here with uh, OBS, 
So I need to keep an eye on that from time to time. And I have another screen over here where I have supplementary information whenever I need it. So I need to be able to have my head looking straight forward and at the same time being able to look to the other directions without that affecting uh, the main screen, the user in other words. Uh, so for that reason uh, eye tracking isn't really a thing for me in this game. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch that off and try out the other default setting by Toby. Uh, which is the this this is the one that we were using except that I disabled auto center so I'm not going to use hand tracking only and I'm again I'm going to disable auto center that's a personal preference I don't like it uh, but we now have zero gaze view responsiveness and no gaze angle so the eyes will not affect the tracking device um, track rating ratio 8.5 and some other settings I'm lowering them for my personal settings but let's take a look at the defaults here this time and see how that works so no eye tracking anymore I'm looking to the left I'm looking to the right looking up nothing happens uh, but when I turn my head, then things happen a little bit up. You don't need that much, especially, at least I don't. Uh, a little bit down, because normally I would have Ducky down there somewhere. Uh, Ducky is my companion, if you're not familiar with my videos. But he's not here today, so there's nothing to look at down there. It's just empty. Uh, but this is the default head tracking only and using eye tracking 4C and 137, 136, 135 of the game that was kind of difficult finding any settings that actually worked and you had to do it manually. Now we have a default setting just for head tracking and it works very very good. This is almost perfect and I'm guessing that for most people you won't even have to do any changes to these settings they are perfect as they are and I can already say that if I want a youtuber I wouldn't bother with changing this even uh, because I have no problem personally with uh, my head the slightest turn I do makes a change like this I have no problem with that of course my viewers would perhaps have a problem with it it would probably feel like I'm never sitting still but when you're the one who are turning the head it feels just natural so this is an excellent default setting for any gamer and I really like that if we go back to the ET5 default settings as I said, the auto center feature there, uh, many of you wouldn't probably be bothered by it. I am, it's just a personal preference again. We have these two, enable position experimental and enable role. Let's have a quick look at those. Um, it's gonna be very quick because I'm a fan of the role at least. And um, th this wouldn't be something I could use when streaming. This is Roll. And uh, yeah, if you want to get seasick... <laughs> oh god, that doesn't work for me. Uh, I'm sure there are games where Roll would make perfect sense, but not in this game. And not in ATS either. Uh, so let's just disable Roll. And keep Position because position is something that I want to use and position is as you can see I'm moving backwards and forward in my seat and the same thing then happens in game which is very useful 
Uh, for instance, if you want to look outside here, that makes it a little easier. Oops. Only time you do that is probably when you're more or less uh, at a standstill with your truck. Uh, there is one problem with it, and it that is the responsiveness. So the problem is that you have that. It is, after all, an experimental feature still, uh, but you can't control it. It's either on or off. You have no slider that allows you to uh, to change anything regarding responsiveness of position, uh, unfortunately. And at this point, I could continue and show you how this device works with my personal settings. I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to refer you to a couple of videos above us here. Uh, a couple of live streams I've done using iTracker 5 so that you can see how it works with my settings if you want to see more of that. Uh, instead, it's getting very close to um, to the elephant in the room. Do I recommend this device? First things first. iTracker 5 is the best head tracking device for ETS2 and ATS that I've ever used. Hands down, period. Uh, nothing comes even close to it. Uh, it has no drawbacks. There are no latency, no uh, battery life to worry about. Uh, it's butter smooth when you move your head back and forward. It doesn't matter if you want to use it as a head tracker only or as an eye tracker only or in a combination of the two. It's up to you what you want to do. If you want to use it uh, like I do, that works beautifully and it works out of the box. Uh, you don't have to make many, if any, changes to the presets that are available to you. Um, uh, the installation is so simple. If you know how to plug in a USB cable, you will be able to set this one up. Uh, if you um, then move on to how you configure it, just look at a few dots and uh, select the preset in game and you're ready to go. Uh, you, you can plug this in at home and five minutes later everything is done. And compare that to the device I've been using up until now, uh, my old tracking device, uh, it took me several months to fine tune it to the settings that I wanted. And iTracker 5, it literally took me five minutes to set it up and get it to work almost perfectly uh, just a few days ago. And now, after a couple of live streams, uh, I have the settings exactly as I want them to. Of course, there's a few things that uh, I know that they will work on. Uh, the experimental uh, role um, and of course the um, experimental feature where you move your head back and forth. We need settings, sliders to adjust those. That will probably come in the future. That's not a big problem. Uh, there is one other thing that I haven't mentioned as well, and that is, uh, I'm probably talking about it a little bit in the live streams. Uh, that is that whatever objects comes in front of uh, or in between your face and the camera will affect the tracking. So if I, for instance, would scratch my nose, uh, you as a viewer would then possibly see that my uh, camera turns 90 degrees or if I drink water the same thing could happen it doesn't happen every time but it happens uh, frequently so what I'm doing is that when I need to scratch my nose or if I need to drink water I switch to the external camera I wish I didn't have to do that I wish that the camera would make a few pointers on my head for instance recognizable objects such as eyes nose mouth in my case, and very old beard, uh, and well, know that that is my face. Everything else that comes in front of it is not my face. So a coffee cup 
is not part of my face, so ignore that. Um, I hope that comes. Uh, it is in no way a big problem, but considering the price tag on this thing, uh, I'm entitled to demanding it. Uh, because that is the biggest only problem with this device. It's going to set you back a lot of money. More money than any other tracking device on the market that I'm aware of. It's going to, cost, it's going to set you back 220 euros. And that is significantly more than any competitor that I'm aware of. So the question then is, is it worth it? And I'm going to say, no, it's not. It is too expensive. The iTracker 4C with its flaws would set you back 160 euros. And if this one were set to 160 euros, I would say, yes, it's worth it. Go buy it now, immediately. Forget about everything else that is out there. Buy the iTracker 5. But for 220 euros, we should be able to get more for our money than we do. And especially knowing that this device supports around 235, 250 different games out there only. And compare that to uh, Track IR uh, that supports so many more games for less money than this device costs. Yes, I'm pretty sure it won't do as good as a job as the iTracker 5 does with the games that iTracker 5 works with, but still it works with more games. So if Flight Simulator 2020 is on your mind, and I know it's on mine, I also know that I'll probably have to keep my other tracking device uh, for the unforeseeable future because I want to use head tracking in Flight Simulator 2020 as well. Uh, over time I'm sure that we will see support for for Tobii iTracker 5 in Flight Simulator as well, but probably not from day one. You will have at least some support for um, track IR in Flight Simulator 2020 from day one. So that is something that needs to be considered as, considered as well. So. Uh, no, it's not worth 220 euros. But again, if it's once it comes down to say 160 euros, yes, it is worth it. Absolutely buy it. Until then, watch my streams instead. It's a lot of fun, I can guarantee you that. And with that said, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, subscribe as well. And till next time, take care, everyone. Bye bye.